Good morning. Second Peter chapter 1 verses 3 to 10 says this. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he's given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not possess them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Therefore, brothers and sisters, make every effort to confirm your calling and election. For if you do these things, you will never stumble and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. By his divine power, we have everything we need for a godly life. We're living in unprecedented times. None of us has ever seen a situation like this in our lifetime. I'm talking as well to our some of our older church family members on the phone this week. They've been around a little longer than I have, and, and they've never seen it in their lifetimes either. They are unsettling times. They're uncertain times. And they can cause us to, to, fear, uh, to feel fearful and anxious. We don't know what's going to happen next. I had a friend of mine that was messaging me on Facebook this week, and this is a guy that I've known my whole life. We grew up together, and, and uh, he's feeling fearful, and then reached out to me asking, you know, as a minister and a community leader, what are you telling people and what are you telling yourself in this? And he's saying that I'm the head of my own little tribe here, my family, and, and they're asking questions that I can't answer. So as we come together in heart and spirit, even though we're not coming together in body, I want us to think about this. How do we respond to crisis? How do we personally respond? with our own personal uncertainties and fears? And how do we respond as a church family to a community that is largely living in fear as well because they're not including God in their lives? By his divine power, we have everything we need. First thing that we have is the promise of God. I want to read you Psalm 91. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's snare, from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion on the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. God promises us that we can trust him. That as we put our faith in him and trust him that we're safe. He promises to be our refuge, to be our place of safety. Now that doesn't mean that we won't ever experience difficulty, that we won't ever experience danger. 
You have no need of a place of refuge if there's not danger around you. So when we face these times of uncertainty, when we face these dangers and these fears, God says that he is the safe place that we can run to, that we can run to him in times of trouble. And where there's traps, he will free us. Where there's troubles, he'll rescue us. Where there's sickness and disease, he'll protect us. Now, if we're honest, we can all share stories of how we have asked God for something, prayed God for something, and it's not been answered the way that we wanted it to be answered. God is sovereign. And sometimes the best answer to our prayer from God is not answered on this side of heaven. And so we can still claim these promises that, that disease and sickness and hardship won't overtake us. Because whether God rescues us on this side of heaven or on the other side of heaven, God is present and active. God has got this. Let's continually put our trust in him. Second thing we have is we have each other. Psalm 68 verses 4 to 6 says this. Sing praises to God and to his name. Sing loud praises to him who rides the clouds. His name is the Lord. Rejoice in his presence. Father to the fatherless. Defender of widows. This is God whose dwelling is holy. God sets the lonely in families. He sets the prisoners free and gives them joy. God has put us together. He has established us as family. He sets us in families to support each other. Church was God's idea. He's put us together as a family with him as our Heavenly Father. So we're here for each other. Some of us will need encouragement. Let's remember to reach out to each other. Some of us might need practical help. We might need groceries or supplies delivered if we're in isolation. Let's remember to check in with each other. Some of us might need financial help because of job loss or, or temporarily being unable to work. We might need finances. Let's be prepared to share with each other. And if you have need, don't keep it to yourself. In Acts 2, verse 45, we see the early church sharing all their possessions and, and giving to anyone who had need. Well, how can we address a need? How can we share with someone who's in need if we're not aware of that need? So let's be open with each other. Let's be honest with each other when we have need. Let's not try and tough this out and, and do it all on our own. Let's be open and honest with each other. The third thing we have is God equipping. A number of months ago, as a church family, we focused on the teaching out of Ephesians 4, which is a teaching about the fivefold ministry. And we saw there that, that God has gifted and equipped each believer in five ministry functions apostle, prophet, evangelist, shepherd, teacher. These are not positions in the church, but these are functions of the church, essential functions of the church. And at that time, we made available a survey that people could do and, and to try and help them get an idea of what their primary area of function is and what their secondary area of function is. And as we're aware of those things, we can, we can put them into practice. And then we did a series of lunch seminars uh, on each of those five. One on the apostle, one on the pastor, shepherd, one on the, the teacher and the evangelist <clears throat> and the prophet. Because we want each one of us to be able to understand what our ministry calling is and our function is in the church so that we can live into that. I think for too long the church has relied on primarily shepherds and teachers and largely ignored the other functions. And it's caused us to, to be like a car that's trying to make its way down the road but only two of its six cylinders in the engine are, are actually firing. And we're limping down the road. Now is the time, I believe, for the church to, to really take hold of its calling and live it out. For us to understand what our calling is in the fivefold areas. If you're an apostle, you're a visionary leader. You're the one that, that God uses <clears throat> to help this church see new things and chart new courses. What vision is it that you are seeing right now that 
for what we could be and do as a church in this season? What opportunities do you see for us as a church to respond? What innovative and creative ideas are bubbling up inside you for, for how we can be a source of a positive change in our community? Share those ideas with us and lead us forward. If you're a prophet, you're the, you're the messenger of God. You're, you're the mouth of God and you're the ears of God. You're the ears because you listen to God, what God is saying, and then you're the mouth because you bring that message to the church. What is God saying to us as a church about being a people of prayer? What is God saying to us that, that challenges us to be faithful to God's word and also to, to care for the marginalized, for those who are suffering the most through this crisis? Share with us what you're hearing. Help us to be faithful, faithful, worshiping, and interceding church. If you're an evangelist, then you're one that's always looking outside the church. You're not as interested in what's going on inside the church, but you're really vitally interested in people outside the church who aren't yet following Jesus. Show us and challenge us how to love our neighbors through this. Remind us of, that this is not a time for us to circle the wagons and turn inward in a self-protective kind of way. Help us to think about how we can be a peacekeeping presence in our community making connections in our community. Encourage us as to how we can be the good news in the midst of so much bad news. <clears throat> if you're a shepherd, then you're the arms of Jesus that brings care and comfort to people. And even though we can't do that physically right now because of our, our social and physical distancing, there are other ways that we can bring comfort to people. Help us to help each other. Help us not get caught up in, in looking after ourselves. Challenge us to be encouragers, to be caregivers to each other in the church, but also to those outside the church, to find ways of helping those who need it most. Teachers, you lead us in, in giving us resources and information that help us through this time. You help us to be informed, you help us to remember what it is that God's word says to us about times like these. Help us to know how to respond as a church. Help us to know what to do in these, these constantly changing times. And help us to make good decisions. In one of my emails that I sent out this week, I used the word crisis. And I talked a bit about what that word means. Because this is a crisis that we're in. But the meaning of the word crisis is not a catastrophe or a disaster. Although in, in modern usage, it tends to be that way. Originally, it wasn't. Crisis really means turning point. The definition of crisis is this. A stage in a sequence of events at which the trend of all future events, especially for better or for worse, is determined. A turning point. Or a condition of instability or danger as in social, economic, political, or international affairs, leading to decisive change. I believe that this situation that we are in right now is a crisis point. It's a crisis point for the world, but it's a crisis point for the church as well. It's a crisis point, a turning point in the story of the church. This is a time where we have to make a decision. We can either make a decision to, to be the church and stand up and make a difference. To be the church that is not just a place where we hope people come and, and gather with us, but the church that we are going out into the community and we're making a difference. We're being good news in people's lives. Or we can make a decision to, to circle the wagons and to stay the course and to continue to become more and more irrelevant to our world. God has given us everything we need to respond to this crisis. He's given us his promises. He's given us each other. And he's given us equipping to do it. What will our decision be? How will we be the church to this community in this time of uncertainty, in this time of crisis? 